In the 1860s, ukiyo-e, Japanese paintings, became a source of inspiration for Western artists, and helped shape the artistic movement known as Japanism. In this video, we will be seeing an example of ukiyo-e, the 53 stations of the Tokaido. Ukiyo-e is a type of art originating in the Edo period. The works are divided into paintings and woodblock prints. The prints, in particular, became popular among the general public because they were easy to mass-produce and affordable. Ukiyo-e covered a broad range of subjects such as female beauties, kabuki actors and sumo wrestlers, scenes from history and folk tales, travel scenes and landscapes, and erotica. The series The 53 Stations of the Takedo by Itagawa Hiroshigi, highlighted in this video, portrays scenes and daily life along the Takedo Highway. The highway, re-established during the early Edo period served as a network of relay stations connecting the shogunate, the military government center, and Kyoto, the royal court seat. Initially intended for official use, the relay system expanded and eventually allowed ordinary people to use it as a highway. In conjunction with the development of transportation networks, Hiroshigi's works made a significant contribution to the tourism boom of the late Edo period. Now, let's take a closer look at Hiroshigi's work The 53 Stations of the Tokaido. This series begins at Nihonbashi in Edo, which is situated in present-day Tokyo. At 4 a.m., the Nihonbashi gates open, and the bustling city of Edo springs to life. At the entrance, a few street vendors check notice signs from the shogunate. The fish vendors equipped with cutting boards and their fish buckets are ready to provide on-the-spot fish processing services for customers. Crossing the bridge is a procession of a certain daimyo. They are returning home after a year of official duties in Edo, and will return to Edo again in another year. Caution, do not obstruct this procession, as doing so might result in severe consequences. However, exceptions are made for emergencies, notably midwives and messengers. When you look up at the roofs, you'll spot a scaffold and a bell. These bells are used to alert the residents in case of a fire. Given that all buildings in Edo are constructed of wood, and fires are a common hazard, various fire prevention devices are strategically placed throughout the city. Here we are in Shinagawa early in the morning, the first in town along the Tokaido. On the street, you can see the tail end of a daimyo's procession. As it's forbidden to obstruct the procession, people move aside and watch it. Watching these parades was a popular form of entertainment at that time. The street is adorned with a few shops. The first four buildings are cafes, and one of them is open, welcoming customers. Following the cafes, there is a row of inns. You could catch a glimpse of the sea from the second-floor windows of these inns. On the sea, a ship is engaged in transporting cargo from the larger ships anchored offshore. But these bay areas have long since been reclaimed by land. From this station, Mount Fuji can be seen. Here we are at the Rokugo River Ferry in Kawasaki, downstream from the Tama River. There used to be bridges over the river, but they were frequently destroyed by flooding. So in those days, the only way to cross the river was by boat. On the right side of the river, you can see some triangular objects. These are fishing nets, and this is how they were dried. On the boat, you can see two passengers enjoying tobacco. Smoking was considered medicinal during that period, it was more common for both men and women to smoke. Towards the front of the boat, a boatman is skillfully steering by pushing his weight on a long rod. On the opposite side of the river, passengers are already waiting for the boat's arrival. It appears that both a horse and a litter, which is a human-powered vehicle, can be accommodated on this boat. At this time, there were a few different types of litter, some were used by ordinary people, like taxis. Express ones were carried by multiple laborers, and luxurious ones were made for daimyos. At the ticket office on the other side of the river, a new passenger is purchasing a boarding ticket. The price for boarding was almost equivalent to the price of a bowl of soba, which is a type of fast food noodles made from buckwheat. Here 
Here at a landing place in Kanagawa, small boats are currently busy unloading their cargo. In the past, one could have enjoyed a similar view overlooking the bay, but nowadays, the bay has been reclaimed and transformed into a downtown district. Along the slope, numerous stores are present, including one called Sakuraya, which still operates today, albeit under a different name. On the street, two touts stand in front of these stores, actively trying to attract potential customers. Just in front of them, there's a traveler with a child. This traveler is carrying a backpack known as Oi, containing clothes and dishes. It's likely that they are on a pilgrimage, perhaps heading towards the Issei Shrine. In front of them is another type of pilgrim known as Rokuju Rokubu. This individual is carrying a special backpack containing transcripts of sutras. He made 66 handwritten copies of Buddhist scripts and is now on his way to deliver them to 66 temples. The name Rokuju Rokubu indicates 66 copies of the scripts. In the late Edo period, people from various classes, including peasants, merchants, and craftsmen, engaged in extensive travel. Often the primary purpose of ordinary people's travel was to visit the Issei Shrine. Group tours were also common, and travel guides were available. During their travels, pilgrims often received generous alms from local people, and as a result, some embarked on their journeys with no money. In Hodogaya, this is a view along the Katabira River. Behind the in-town, you can see rice fields. The rice harvest season has concluded, and the collected rice is being spread out to dry. The triangular objects you can see are harvested rice, not fishing nets. The people about to cross the bridge are samurai travelers. The samurai himself is seated in a covered litter, accompanied by two bearers, an attendant, and a baggage carrier carrying two boxes suspended from a balance bar. Walking ahead of them is a komso, a Zen sect monk. He is carrying a wrapping on his back like a backpack. At his waist, he carries a bamboo flute called shakuhachi. As they continue to cross the bridge, they come across a soba noodle shop. In front of this establishment, a lantern signboard indicates the prices. A serving of buckwheat noodles is priced at 2 multiplied by 8, totaling 16 mons, which would be roughly equivalent to 4 US dollars. Emerging from inside the town is a daimyo procession. The monk and the samurai travelers on the bridge might return to the bridge and wait for the procession to pass by. We are at the junction of the Takaido and Kamakura Road, within the Tatsuka Station. Fast travelers were capable of covering the distance from Nihonbashi to Tatsuka in a day. At this crossroads, there's a cafe and inn with a signboard that reads Kameya. Kameya sounds like the name of a rice store, and was indeed renowned for its rice crackers. The nameplates placed next to the signboard bear the names of major temples and shrines, indicating that this is an official and designated by those religious institutions as a stop for pilgrims. In front of the inn, a female staff is seen preparing tobacco, an ashtray, and a source of fire to welcome the weary travelers. A traveler has just arrived on horseback and is dismounting in front of the inn. Beside him, his horse and a horse caretaker. During that time, horses didn't wear iron horseshoes but rather straw ones. A female traveler who has just arrived is removing her hat in preparation for a rest. This hat, referred to as a kasa, was generally woven from bamboo or straw. On the bridge, an elderly traveler is approaching, carrying luggage consisting of two baskets tied together with string. This type of traveler's bag was quite common and could be spotted throughout Japan. What is a daimyo procession? A daimyo procession, known as daimyo gyoretsu, occurred when feudal lords traveled to meet other feudal lords. In this context, lower-ranking lords went to visit higher-ranking lords, thus expressing the daimyo's obedience to the shogun. The illustration on the screen depicts the Sanabe Domain's procession with a kakudaka of almost 30,000 kokus. The procession consisted of spearmen, archers, gunners, horsemen, litters for daimyo and their relatives, as well as numerous porters. In the Edo period, this practice was institutionalized as Sankin Kotai. Under this system, daimyos were obliged to spend one year in Edo and one year in their territories. 
Meanwhile, their wives and legitimate sons resided in Edo, serving as hostages to the shogunate, symbolizing their Pledge of Allegiance. As mentioned earlier, no one was permitted to obstruct the daimyo procession, with exceptions only for messengers and medical personnel during emergencies, such as doctors or midwives. In the case of the Tokugawa family's procession, people were obligated to bow their heads and see it off. Although violations of these rules often resulted in only a stern warning, there have been cases, such as a three-year-old child being sentenced to death. The primary purpose of this practice was to demonstrate submission and clarify the hierarchical relationship between the shogun and daimyos. However, this system had some secondary effects, such as imposing an economic burden on daimyos, resulting in a reduction in their military power. Additionally, it led to the development of cities along the highways and improved the transportation network. In particular, it helped increase the population of Edo, where the daimyo's families and servants were permanently stationed, to over one million inhabitants. Help motivate us to make more videos by liking and subscribing. Thank you for watching!